the world witnessed the biggest protest here in Hong Kong in decades, and yet the top leader here in the city, Carrie Lam, is defiant and defending the extradition bill. Tell us how. Yeah, that's exactly right, Christy. I mean, if, if Sunday was a day of action, a historic day of protest, well, it was really all eyes turning to the government uh, here on Monday. How would the Hong Kong government, led by Carrie Lam, respond uh, after what we saw on Sunday? And if you thought that Carrie Lam might be changing her position as a result of what we saw on Sunday, well, she made it quite clear today that that's not the case. Hundreds of thousands of people out on the streets proves democracy is in good hands, Hong Kong's leader claimed on Monday. Rights and freedoms of individuals, of journalists, etc., are fully protected. But Carrie Lam waved away the concerns of this vast group of people, more than one million, organizers say, who fear that her government's legislation to allow extradition to China would undermine the rule of law here. This bill is not initiated by the central people's government. I, I have not received any instruction or mandate from Beijing. Please save my daughter was the message from this man who brought his child to Sunday's mass demonstration. Protest organizers say the idea of being put on trial in the mainland would silence Beijing's critics in what is now China's freest city. There is no fair trial. There, there is no uh, humane punishment guarantees on the mainland. History points to one good reason to worry about political activists being taken to China to face the Communist Party's justice. Five booksellers who sold work critical of Chinese leaders went missing in late 2015 from Hong Kong, later turning up in mainland China, where they confessed to illegally distributing books banned on the mainland. The confessions were widely viewed as coerced. China's government didn't do much to quell those fears on Monday when censors blocked coverage of the massive protest, erasing posts from social media on the mainland. Meanwhile, some state-run media have suggested the United States government has been involved somehow in the protest because of the ongoing U.S.-China trade war. A U.S. consulate spokesman called the allegation, quote, manifestly absurd. Beijing could be forced to block news from Hong Kong again on Wednesday when more demonstrations are planned by those who fear that semi-autonomous Hong Kong is at risk of becoming like the rest of heavily censored China. And Christy, uh, Beijing state media in the mainland kind of using the kind of tactics that we've seen before in terms of blaming the protests on outside forces, saying things like the United States, as we mentioned in our piece, has maybe something to do with fomenting dissent here as a way to kind of explain away what I think most people in the city would agree is a grassroots movement. Uh, I think yeah. if you said to the million or so people on the street that this was coming from the United States. I think they might be quite offended by that. But moving forward, if we look Wednesday morning, 10 a.m., that's when we're expecting more protests to occur because that is the next time that the parliament here in Hong Kong is going to debate uh, this bill. It's clear, Christy, that this fight over this very controversial potential piece of legislation uh, is not over yet. Matt, you're absolutely right. You talk to any of the protesters who are out and about on Sunday, and they will tell you that they were there of their own volition. This is a grassroots movement, not the work yeah. of so-called foreign forces, with more protest action to come. Matt Rivers reporting live for us. Thank you so much. Let's look deeper into what makes this extradition bill so controversial. Our critics say it will leave anyone on Hong Kong soil vulnerable to being grabbed by Chinese authorities, whether for political reasons or even a business offense. But Hong Kong's government defends the bill, saying that it is designed to plug legal loopholes by allowing them to decide on a case-by-case -case basis whether to send suspects to places where it does not have a formal extradition agreement, like mainland China. But far beyond the shores of Hong Kong, the extradition bill is drawing criticism from the likes of the United States and Europe. Now, police arrested 19 people and questioned hundreds more in the protests. Let's now bring in Denise Ho, a popular Cantopop singer, an activist here in Hong Kong. She has become a symbol of the city's struggle for civil freedoms from mainland China and joins us now. Denise, thank you for joining us here on the program. First, in your Hello, words, Christy. why do you oppose the extradition bill? I think this whole protest with this, these million people of Hong Kong 
is totally the root cause is totally uh, the 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 way that the Hong Kong government has been treating the Hong Kong people since after the Umbrella Movement, where so many people have been uh, arrested and prosecuted and put in jail, and also the way that they have become tone deaf to the demands of Hong Kong people. So um, I think. This extradition bill is extremely dangerous to Hong Kong citizens, uh, myself included, since I have been banned from China, and um, I might I am also very vulnerable to this bill because I am outspoken in uh, all aspects of what's happening to Hong Kong and uh, the tightening grip of China on Hong Kong right now. So um, I think the people who came up onto the streets yesterday is um, all we are all protesting against uh, this very dangerous bill that would make Hong Kong just another China city. Uh, you do not want this bill to pass because you feel vulnerable. Hundreds of thousands, if not more, fellow Hong Kongers feel the same way. And yet the top leader here in Hong Kong, Carrie Lam, will not budge. Today, she said that the law is necessary, and she tried to provide some reassurances. She said human rights safeguards are in place. Is there anything more she could say or do to reassure you and fellow protesters about this bill? The way that they have responded uh, so quickly and so, um, like, they haven't budged a bit. Uh, even we had so many people on the streets. It is yeah. really alarming for us. And I think uh, you know, as long as they do not provide any uh, sense of security for the Hong Kong people, uh, I don't think that we can trust them in any way. And uh, it's, it is quite obvious that Carrie Lam is only responding and uh, you know, working for not the Hong Kong people, but... Um, you know, may probably someone from the Beijing government, even though he, she denies that. But it is quite obvious for Hong Kong is that uh, the Hong Kong government is no longer protecting us uh, from any, mm. any uh, harm that the communist government might cause us. Hey, 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 Denise, you are a high-profile, uh, well-known, outspoken activist and artist. In 2014, at the height of the Umbrella Movement, you protested for universal suffrage. Uh, you were, in fact, arrested for your protest. As we know, yes. there's no universal suffrage here in Hong Kong. And there's been an erosion, a steady erosion of freedom since then. You're now fighting this extradition bill that the government says will pass. And I have to ask you, why fight? Why fight? What gives you hope? The fact that so many people came onto the streets even after these four or five years of frustration and even some people have been, young people especially, have been checking out uh, within these four years because we think that the government is no longer listening. And the fact that they all came out yesterday, I think that is already a very strong statement and also a reason for Hong Kong people to keep on fighting. And... Um, like me personally and many people who came onto the streets yesterday, I think we are realistic and we know that the Hong Kong government might not budge and maybe even this bill might pass. But the fact that we are the one city in the China perimeter where we can still protest and we are still st strongly fighting against this tightening grip, I think that is something that uh, the Hong Kong government and also the communist government, they should be afraid of because um, we are not mm. a city that they can control like any other um, China city. And that is a fact that was demonstrated on the streets yesterday. And I personally hope that uh, the Hong Kong people, uh, we can acknowledge this fact that we are still strong and we are still fighting. Mm. And, and has the nature of your fight changed? Um, the nature of your protest since 2014, when, again, the 2014 umbrella movement failed to deliver universal suffrage. Now there's this greater fight, the extradition bill for the autonomy of Hong Kong. This is a greater fight. Some people are calling it for the soul of Hong Kong. Are tactics changing among protesters like yourself? 
I am personally calling on Hong Kong people to change and to think of smarter ways to fight. And our tactics that we used in the umbrella movement is no longer um, the only way that we can do it. Because obviously the Hong Kong government, they are tightening uh, the grip and also they are upgrading their tactics because uh, you saw the riot police uh, who were uh, dispersing the crowds yesterday and the way that they did it is absolutely you know the training from these four years so the way that we did it in 2014 is not uh, the only way that is uh, possible right now and uh, I think the only way to do it is you know we we change it into a wider spectrum of uh, different tactics and different fights among the people of Hong Kong and uh, you know doing it in in our own ways and not waiting for just one organization or one uh, pe one person to to call on but like many people uh, pitching in and doing things at the same time and that is you know something that the Hong Kong government they cannot they do not have that tactic to 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 uh, suppress us uh, at the moment. So we need to be very flexible and very smart.